and we will see that while slow, it does actually begin to generate a response at a somewhat reasonable speed considering that this is a two gigabyte Pi 4B. So something a little old at this point and having a fairly small amount of RAM. So today's video is going to be perhaps a bit more technical than the traditional model testing that I've become accustomed to doing. However, a lot of folks, myself included, were interested in seeing how well the BitNet b one58 2 b 4 t model would run on a Raspberry Pi. So I went through and tried to get this running and encountered a bit of hiccups. So today's video is going to be essentially a tutorial followed by some testing of getting this model set up and working properly properly on a Raspberry Pi. The specific Pi that I'm going to be using for today's video is a Raspberry Pi 4B equipped with two gigabytes of RAM. So something that traditionally otherwise would not have really allowed us to run a model of this size. It is quite slow, but a two billion, uh, I'm sorry, a two gigabyte RAM Pi 4B is pretty old and nerfed in terms of what it's actually capable of running. So we can jump over to the system right here and see that this is actually BitNet running on this Pi right here. And if I just ask it to say hi to YouTube, I don't know, that just kind of came to mind. We will essentially see that after a bit of time, it will go ahead and start to respond at a somewhat reasonable speed. So we're gonna jump through the installation steps, which aren't too bad. There are a few differences that we need to kind of go about in terms of comparing this to the instructions from the BitNet GitHub repository. But we can see that BitNet is working right here. It's saying, hello, it's here to assist us. And basically, let's just run into actually getting this installed and set up, and then we'll compare it to another small model in terms of feasibility and memory utilization and things of that sort. Now let's just jump right into the installation steps to get BitNet b one58 2 b 4 t working on the Raspberry Pi 4B with two gigabytes of RAM. Now I do have all of the instructions here on my website so that it is quite simple for anyone at home also to follow along with what we're doing here. And keep in mind that in doing this, this is assuming that the prerequisites kind of match the system I have. I would assume that slight variations in your system and operating system will likely produce a working result if you follow these instructions. But with that said, I do want to mention that I have only specifically tested this on a fresh install of the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, a port of Debian Bookworm from 2024-11-19. So, that is the system I'm using here, and with that, we're essentially going to go ahead and start. So this is a completely fresh install of Raspbian, or whatever the Raspberry Pi OS is called now, and we're going to begin by just basically going ahead and installing the required requirements, <laughs> as well as updating our system. Once step one is complete, we are going to move to step two, which is quite similar from something we saw in the actual Microsoft BitNet GitHub repository, where we just go ahead and install Clang using this uh, installation script that they had given us. Once that's complete, we are going to go ahead and create and activate a virtual environment. Now in the GitHub repository for BitNet, they do mention using Conda and kind of suggest it. I find that this works fine for the use case we have here, which is likely more experimental for anyone who is wanting to play with this. And once our virtual environment has been created and activated, our next step is step four, which is to clone the BitNet GitHub repository using the recursive flag, change into it, and then go ahead and install the requirements from within the cloned repository. Now, once we have cloned the repo and installed all of the requirements from it, this is where what we're going to do now slightly differs a bit from the actual repository instructions. And because of that, I do want to just quickly make note of that. So in the repository here, were we following this for a standard setup, we would basically go ahead and first download the model and then run this setup underscore and dot Python script. Now doing that on the Pi was resulting in a lot of errors. So what we're doing here is kind of a way around that to still get this to work. So we're almost kind of manually doing some of what running this script would go ahead and do in terms of setting up the environment. So for step five right here, we are just essentially going to copy and run this. Think of like a chef who's about to cook a large meal and they first need to lay out all of their ingredients and their pots and pans and get organized and things like that. That is kind of akin to what is going on with this step five right here. 
in keeping with that kind of example, this would almost be like the chef then going ahead and cooking the meal so that it can then be served, which would essentially just be like talking to the model. That is very unscientific, and don't quote me on that, but um, that's just kind of the gist, if you will. So with that, step six will take a little bit of time, so keep in mind that um, it will, one, take a little bit of time, and two, it will look like there's a bunch of errors popping up on the screen and things like that, but they're not errors. Everything should work fine, assuming you have the same setup I have here, and you will see the percentage of what's going on there. So like that where it looks like there's just a lot of errors popping up on the screen. This is normal and to be expected. And you can see a lot of this is just like uh, warnings and things like that. So we'll let this run for a while. And when this is done, we will be one step closer to actually being able to use this model on a relatively old device. And now that step six is finally completed, we are going to just go ahead and download the quantized model. So we can then go ahead and basically try it and make sure everything works. Again, this is like a one point something 1.84 gigabyte file download so nothing too large and when the model is downloaded we can go on and run our first test with it this will just do a quick simple test where basically the prompt is hello from bitnet on pi 4 and the cnv flag denotes that this is conversation mode where we can actually talk to it something like that let me just verify that real quick <laughs> whether to enable chat mode or not okay yes so that is kind of what that is. And this won't take too long to get loaded, I don't recall. Um, it shouldn't. The Pi is definitely much slower to respond right now while it's doing all of this. I had only tried this just for testing to make sure everything worked through an SSH session from a remote machine. So this is the first time I'm actually doing this from the Pi's desktop. And we can see right here it's doing hello from BitNet on Pi 4. And we could just go ahead and ask it something to verify that it's working properly. I'll do the generic, how are you? And we will see that while slow, it does actually begin to generate a response at a somewhat reasonable speed, considering that this is a two gigabyte Pi 4B. So something a little old at this point and having a fairly small amount of RAM. And we can see the model's lucid, of course. I did do more of a kind of model test in my other video on this. This one's more just kind of pivoted to actually how to get this installed and running on the Pi 4. Now, something I have found here is that it seems like if you do control C while it is still generating text, um, sometimes it can glitch out and you need to reopen the terminal and then um, go back in here and everything. But just wanted to mention that real quick. So with this, there is also a way to specify a little more speed here, I suppose you could say, where the dash T flag with four will spawn four threads and then basically it just uses more of the Pi's CPU to actually have the model generate. So we can run this once again, and it is essentially the same thing, except this is using more of the Pi's available performance in terms of actually generating the response. So hypothetically, this should be a bit faster. All right, so after playing with this for a little, I would probably say don't do nine, as we see right here. Just kind of ignore that. Just play with it from step eight, as it seems to perform better. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe this is just using too much of the Pi's CPU, so maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I, I, yeah, um, but it does work, which is good, which was, I suppose, the end goal of all of this. Our prompt eval time here is 1.44 tokens per second, and then our eval time here is 2.14 tokens per second. So that would mean that the actual generation speed here is around 2.14 tokens per second in terms of its response speed, which I guess is I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really going to try to quantify it, but it, it seems all right. All right, I've installed Olama because I just want to get a comparison of this against something somewhat similar. So we can see the model we're using here is 2.4 billion parameters. Unfortunately, I can't get anything super comparable in terms of size from Olama. In addition to that, this isn't necessarily designed to be super competitive performance-wise in terms of how smart it is. It's more about the memory saving. So with that, one of the comparisons that they had actually shown in the Hugging Face link for this new re newly released model, which is what we're running right here, is Quen 
2.5, 1.5B. So I am going to go ahead and actually just pull that from Olama and we'll test it against that. We can see in the chart here on Hugging Face for the BitNet model that we're running, it is compared with that as well in the chart here. Now these values are from full precision LLMs of similar size. So we are going to pull the Q4KM quant here of this model as that is the default one that shows up with Olama and it is pretty small. So we'll just kind of do that and we'll see how the speed comparison is. Okay, so <laughs> here's our first kind of <laughs> introduction to how cool the BitNet model is, where basically we're just trying to run Quen 2.5, 1.5B at a default Q4K mquant through Olama, and we're unfortunately getting an error that the model requires more system memory than is available, which was 1.4 gigs of system RAM available, which is quite a small amount. Um, so basically this is a 1.5 billion parameter model as well in comparison to the model that we're running here, which is a 2.4 billion parameter model for BitNet, which was working on this Pi, which was really the most important thing was to see if it could even work. But beyond that, we can see here that a 1.5 billion parameter model at a fairly aggressive quantization at Q4 KM is running out of memory and won't even run on the Pi, whereas this BitNet model will. So really, that is the cool thing about this and why I definitely wanted to get this running on a Pi. I noticed a lot of other folks had expressed interest in doing this as well, because the like BitNet and things like this are definitely a fascinating and exciting future direction for running LLMs on edge devices or low power devices. So this is quite interesting. Now I do want to just get it to run against something. So I will probably just try to pull, oh, I searched the wrong thing, Gemma 3 from Olama. I should just, uh, let's try that. Okay, cool. I got that right. I was good at guessing. <laughs> so we'll just try pulling the Gemma 3 1 billion model, and that should hopefully work. But again, I don't know that it is going to. All right, so Gemma 3 did actually manage to load the 1 billion parameter. Let's go ahead and see how it does. It is reasonably quick. In fact, it does seem a bit faster, or more than a bit, no pun intended, but it is a bit faster than BitNet. It even gave me a interesting looking emoji right here. We can see this is using around 72% of the available memory on this Pi. I would like to just get a token speed for that, so we'll run Olama with the verbose flag. And I'll ask it something a little more uh, like intelligent. Although I'm worried now it's going to kind of ramble on, so we'll... And we can see this process right here is using 74% of the memory um, based on what Top is saying right here. I should have just asked it, hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm going to guess this is like 2.5 to 3.5 tokens per second if it ever does stop talking. All right, I'm just asking it, hey, how are you? Because it was going on about GPUs and my patience expired. And I just want to see <laughs> what the token readout is after it's done. <laughs> okay, so that was 3.72 tokens per second. So definitely a bit faster than BitNet. However, remember that this is a 1 billion parameter model, while BitNet was a 2.4 billion parameter model. And in order to actually get a model of the same size as the BitNet model running on this Pi, it would not work unless it was such an aggressive quantization that the model would likely be unable to produce anything lucid at all, at least compared to BitNet's ability to actually produce proper answers and things of that sort. So with that, I do want to basically run BitNet once again here, but I want to keep tabs on the memory utilization as we saw with Gemma 3.1b, which was using around 75% of the memory. So that's what we're going to do right here. All right, so it just finally started generating. For some reason, it seemed much slower. And this is showing that it was using around 75% of the memory when it started. So really, it was quite identical. 
And again, there may be things that I'm not considering here in terms of the actual memory utilization between these two different things and things like that. But basically what I'm seeing here is this is using pretty much the same amount of memory as Gemma 3.1b did. And it's a bigger model. So that's good, I think. <laughs> again, I'm not quite sure. Let me exit out of that and we'll see. So right there we were getting 2.84 tokens per second. So again, it was a bit slower, but using the same amount of memory for a model that is over twice of twice the size parameter wise. So that's really going to wrap this up. Essentially, the whole point of this video was first and foremost, kind of just a tutorial on how to get this running on the Pi, as it was kind of a pain in the butt, and there would have been a lot of very hair pull frustration things that you would encounter. On top of that, I just kind of wanted to test it in comparison to another small model, just in terms of memory utilization and token speed. And we saw that Again, there may be things that I didn't consider here in terms of the memory utilization or optimizations, etc. But it used around the same amount of memory as Gemma 3.1b did to produce output. However, this model is basically 2.4 times larger in terms of the parameters than the Gemma model that we were running. So it is really cool. And to actually have gotten another model of this size running on this machine, I don't think would have worked unless it was a very, very aggressive quant that likely would reduce the quality of the model's output to far below what we're getting with this BitNet model. So Again, there's definitely a lot more testing to be done with this and things of that sort, but I wanted to just provide first and foremost a tutorial on how to get this running on a Pi and then just a little bit of comparison in terms of like um, its performance on said Pi. So with that, that's going to wrap it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will have a link to the install tutorial just so you can copy paste the commands in the description. And that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching.